Hello and welcome to Will Watches. This is Arcane episode six. So last episode, we had some really good revelations. Silco now knows that Vi is back and we see the fear in his face. I'm really wondering what his actions will be from now. Now that he knows this information, will he keep it from Powder? Or will he try and use it to manipulate Powder somehow? There's a lot of things that can happen here with that. And of course, there's the inevitable meeting, the two of them meeting. I feel like that might happen this episode. Just because we've had like a few episodes of them apart at this point, this feels like that's the natural progression because this is the end of this second act, you know? So I'm imagining this episode will end with something big. And then also we have the Victor and Jace side. So Jace and Mel are now maybe in a relationship. Maybe she's manipulating him somehow. Unfortunately, I did get one thing spoiled for me with when it comes to Victor that he injects himself with the shimmer or someone injects him. I, you know, I still don't know the situation around that. Does he inject himself to heal himself? Does he do it to fight? Like, what's going on there? Because there's a whole situation with him and the DNA, the blood getting into this gem and what the consequences of that are going to be. So there's, you know, there's still lots of things I don't know yet. So before we get into this, be sure to check out the Patreon over there that you can find full length timer based reactions where you can just sync up your own footage. You can also find polls so you can vote for what's next and you can get early access where we'll probably be finished with the show by now, or very close to. So yeah, let's just jump right in. It looks like there's something in the water. It looks like it had a purple tinge there. Oh, this is young Victor. So he's always been like a mechanic, yeah. He can't quite keep up with it. Ooh, what's all this? It's like a purple gem almost. A purple plant. <laughs> it's like a giant axolotl. You built this. This plant is reminding me of Shimmer a bit because it's purple. Like, is Shimmer derived from that? This is real. She's a rare mutation that I cultivated. Cultivated. She, Rhea reminds me a bit of Toothless. Just the giant eyes and that kind of the shape. She's dying. I'm attempting to prevent that. Is this the guy who's working with Silco to develop the Shimmer? We can be loners together. Yeah, everyone's everyone's interconnected. It seems. Seems just yesterday I stumbled upon an aspiring young scholar from the Undercity here. So Heimerdinger is the one who brought him up. You should be proud of what you've accomplished, Victor. All of the plants and greenery look so good. That butterfly. My contributions will be short-lived, even in your memory. Now, he's worked so well on the hex tech. often burn fastest. Oh, he's suffering with burnout a bit. That window looked like it could almost be a skull shape as well. I don't think we've seen that guy yet. Looks like a guy who was like holding a hammer. I don't think we've seen him yet, but I think everyone else in here we have. And there was a shot that looked like Victor was running and his prosthesis was kind of breaking apart. It reminded me of like Forrest Gump. Victor's dying. I think it has something to do with gases in the fissures where he grew up. Exactly the sort of thing we wanted to fix with Hextech. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They still haven't done anything to fix the underground. I hate feeling so useless. I didn't realize he was so close. It's not going to be Jace the one who gets pushed into giving Victor the shimmer. You should be with him, Jace. I love her purple lipstick and eyeshadow. Usually purple is used for undertones for black skin in art. It works really well with like the color scheme. Where is this? Or is he just seeing like a vision? Yeah, that looked, that looked like it was almost the inside, what we saw the inside of the gem before when his like blood was like fusing with it. It looks almost purpley here instead of the pure blue from before. They, they got in a fight with Savika. Did a number on her. You're doing great, Chuck. <laughs> Is she going to re realize that it's fine? You almost gave it away there. <laughs> Everyone's just like a little bit scared of her, it seems, because she's so unhinged. Can you do this? <laughs> 
And someone's looking on. Oh, it's the firelights guy. We lost her. Lost who? <laughs> I hope this just knocked her out. She hasn't just killed Savika like that, right? I thought it might have been like a truth serum gas or something. No need. It's your sister. <laughs> yeah, that's not what she wants to hear. <laughs> She's looking for you. It's not what you think. She's with some girl enforcer. Guess she replaced you. You're lying! Caitlin's even got the blue hair. Ah, <laughs> uh, about time daddy joined. Ooh, <laughs> that's a power play, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that sad? Could you imagine being separated from your father? <laughs> In a safe place. She's in the lanes. There's an enforcer with her. Yeah, Marcus and Kate, they're going to be pitched against each other now. They cannot be allowed to resurface. Do we understand each other? Yeah, Marcus is, you know, making more and more mistakes when it comes to his relationship with Silco. It responds to organic matter. Okay. It's, yeah, it's like growing the plant. <laughs> Is it because it came in contact with some organic matter? Technology, extending life, curing you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's only temporary. Rejecting the transmutation. Because it's not, like, meant to be. Oh, is Jace the one with the hammer in the intro? People, you topsiders don't want to think about wind up. <laughs> it's like the underbelly of the underbelly, isn't it? Don't even have any light down here. Not all of them. We aren't monsters, you know. We're people, just like you. People that don't help them out, though. <laughs> I shouldn't have left you. It's all right. No, yeah, she was talking to Powder then, wasn't she? I'm calling it the Hex Core. Heimerding is seeing the danger in everything. What's most exciting is that it reacts to biological matter. There are stories of he yeah, he doesn't like this at all, does he? I've seen nations destroyed by a single seed, and it looked exactly like this. So it's been used as weaponry before? You've changed. What did you do? W what do you mean, Professor? Is it helping Victor out a bit? Or is it corrupting him? Is she all right? No, no, he's just trying to help. I'm a friend. Oh, this is the guy from episode one, yeah. Wow, what happened to him? He's got all these warts on him and stuff. Someone else who might be able to help. Come with me. Don't exactly want to leave her on her own though. She makes potions. Helps people here with with this. What is this though? Oh, it's the side effect of the shimmer, okay. Instead of trade. Giving up her gun. I thought she might have given up her necklace or something. See, yeah, a drop of shimmer in it. But obviously there's like safe amounts of shimmer to take because Silco has been. I found this on one of the firelights. It matches fragments we found outside your lab and at the hex gates. I saw Caitlin Kiriman had a prisoner released on your order. Is there anything I can assist with? Yeah, so Jace is just getting on everyone's bad side, isn't he? Your Hextech projects need more time, more safeguards. Humans don't live for centuries. We can't wait for progress. I believe it's time we gave the beloved founder of our city a well-deserved retirement. It seems like they're all going to agree with him. It seemed like quite a good speech he was giving. Professor. But the others might see this as a power play again, you know? If Jace has done this to Heimerdinger, he can do it to anyone. This is going to have some dire consequences, though. They were killed by enforcers. Caitlin's getting a bit of a reality check here. <laughs> Look at him, he's like a king everywhere. <laughs> People kneeling before him almost. I regretted that we've never had the opportunity to speak. Oh, and she saw him. Oh, 
Oh, she is more than I ever imagined. Is she just concealed of this, or is she just somewhere else? It's what got Vander killed, and what drove your sister away. And it's why I'm here. Yeah, can I take down three Shimmer Enhanced people? And someone who she has an emotional connection to? Too much. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Knocked down the whole thing, yeah. Didn't realize Vi was in on that plan as well. That looked like it landed on the Silco, but I don't think it'd be taken out here. Wherever you are, light it up and I'll find Oh yeah, that's what that was. Okay. Because she knows that Vi is alive now, but will she lose trust in Vi if Vi can't get there? Oh yeah, Milo and Clagger. The forces are getting ready to move in. See, Silco getting more and more desperate now, aren't we? This montage is amazing. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's seeing the flare. Back to young Victor. Yeah, yeah, this must be the shimmer, these these plants. The doctor's trying to keep them alive. The actual character design looks a bit like Frankenstein's monster, even though he's probably more like Frankenstein the doctor himself, you know? Yeah, and he's finally returning. And Rio's still alive after all this time. The animation, the combination of the 3D and 2D assets, the like plushness of that chair just looks so good. Yeah, <laughs> she's a trap. Oh, Sabika. So has Jinx lost faith in Silco now? There we go. I said she'd come and she hasn't. Powder? Oh no, she is. She's here. Hi. Oh, Powder. This is a much more wholesome reunion than I thought. I got arrested. Marcus. I don't know. I, it doesn't matter. I just... I never thought I'd see you again. Are you real? Yeah, she doesn't know what's real and what's fake anymore. Who's she? Who are you? It's okay. She's a friend. We can work this out. This is a trick! You're playing me! Oh, yeah, of course. It wasn't gonna go well. It's Jinx now. Powder fell down a well. You can fire that thing if you want, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to abandon you again. Is it actually something? Oh, the fire lights. <laughs> Fighting back to back after all this time. But Katie's only worried about the gem, of course. Yeah, she's like enjoying it. Oh, now the firelights have it. Were they after it? Or they took Caitlyn as well. I love the character movement on that girl, the one that took the gem. All of their masks are different animals and the way they move almost reflects that. Yeah, she hasn't seen powder like this. Actually being able to fight. Okay, 
okay that isn't where i expected this to go okay so that was arcane episode six that really wasn't what i was expecting this ending to be vi and caitlin both being kidnapped by the firelights my theory is still that echo is the leader of the firelights and i think I just thought something that kind of confirms that even more. You know, before we'd seen Echo was always an onlooker. He was always seeing everything that was happening. And then his mask is an owl. And owls are very known for like their sight and their like night vision, that kind of thing. So I feel like that might be even more clues that it is Echo. If it's not, I'm gonna look like an idiot, but that's what I think it is at the moment. So this is the end of act two, and I was expecting another time skip because we had a time skip at the end of act one, but I don't think that's gonna be the case here. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be the case here. It seems like Powder is going to maybe go on a rescue mission for Vi and Caitlin. I feel like this either gonna be a rescue mission or it's gonna be like a rescue mission gone wrong. Cause I could see maybe the firelight leader reveals himself, reveals his plan or her plan. And we see what the motive is for the firelights. Because all we know at the moment is they are disrupting the shimmer transportation and everything, you know? So I'm wondering what their motive there is. Obviously we've seen now how devastating the consequences of overdosing and everything on the shimmer actually is. We saw that guy back from episode one who is now a shimmer addict and he's got all of these warts and his face is really distorted now. I think he might be dead now. I don't know if he was caught in that falling building from before because it seemed like he was one of the ones that um, Silco gave all of the shimmer to. So I feel like, you know, the leader of the Firelights shows them what their plan is, shows them what they're doing. Maybe Vi and Caitlin agree with their motive. And then as they've agreed, Powder jumps back, jumps right in because she's, oh, my kid, my sister's been kidnapped. I need to go and save her. She jumps in recklessly and maybe ruins whatever's going to happen. Or or she might go to Silco for help to go get Vi, but I don't know how that will go. You know, we will eventually have to have the Silco reveal where he reveals to Powder that he was the one who killed Vanda and caused all of this to happen in the first place, you know? And that's just another betrayal for Powder to have to go through again, you know? And then we finally had Powder and Vi reunited this episode, but it really wasn't what I was expecting, you know? I was fully expecting the first time they reunite, it was gonna be like a stand off and then fight but it was actually much more wholesome than I thought it was going to be but of course that eventually devolved down when Powder had seen Caitlyn. Savika had said that you'd been replaced and then there's Caitlyn here who has blue hair and she's an enforcer who are like the enemies of Powder essentially you know so of course that completely explains her reaction to it. It was probably a good thing the firelights came in and interrupted because I feel like Powder might have overreacted and shot Caitlyn or something of that sort. And I think she was ready to shoot Vi at one point as well, wasn't she? And it does seem that Silco is getting more and more desperate. He's still putting on this face of he's this big leader, this mob boss, but this time when he's actually out in the field, even though he's not doing any fighting, he hasn't like injected himself with shimmer or anything he's there in person to confront Vi which I wasn't expecting I thought he'd be pulling the strings from a distance you know so I feel like he is getting more desperate and then of course he shows up at Marcus's house to threaten him and threaten his daughter that was a great scene you know all of the double entendres where he's like threatening the little girl to Marcus while also giving her like a lesson or something, you know, saying things like, oh, accidents happen. But, you know, he means, oh, I could act, I could accidentally kill your daughter and things like that, you know. That was just a great scene building up so much tension and building up some villainy for Silco, you know. And then up in Piltover, Jace is just making more and more enemies. He has thrown out Heimerdinger now, which is going to be a real problem because I think all of the other counsellors will see that he has done that. And now they might feel threatened as well. And he's already kind of on some of their bad sides, even though, you know, he was kissing up to them a bit before, but maybe this might be like an eye opener for them. And I think even Mel 
is worried about him at this point. I don't know, you know, is she just worried about him in general or is she worried about him from like her political standpoint? Is she like worried that she's gonna be put into danger politically because of his actions or is she just like worried about his well-being as well? It might be like a mixture of both, you know? You know, one thing that we still haven't really got is all of these characters interacting. We've got kind of two simultaneous stories here. We have the Piltover side with Jace and Mel and all of the counselors. And then we have the Underbelly side with Powder and Vi and everyone. So I am wondering where this like crossover is going to happen between both of these plot points. Because the only real crossover here at the moment is Marcus. He is the most kind of flexible character between the two, him and Caitlin really. So it's the Enforcers really, because the Enforcers are the only ones who like traverse between the two different worlds aren't they so i am waiting for the moment where maybe jace meets vi or powder or something like that i think that will be a real eye opener for him jace's heart he does want to help everyone doesn't he and he was saying this episode you know he's done all of this stuff but it's only helped the rich it's only helped the people of piltover it hasn't helped the lower people so i think maybe seeing some of the consequences of that might be an eye opener for him as well because he does actually want to help deep down doesn't he and you know victor victor's the one who really wants this to happen because he came from the underground and was kind of brought up raised by heimerdinger a bit or like mentored by heimerdinger heimerdinger saw the potential in victor didn't he and then brought him up and of course we have everything going on with victor this episode we have a bit more of this hextech gem that was infused with his dna and now can manipulate organic matter and we see it grow this plant really quick but then the plant kind of dies off and i think that's maybe just you can artificially grow the plant really big but the plant never got the new the nutrients and the sunlight and everything it needed to grow to that point so it just dies off you know if you like artificially aged up a human they would be like anorexic because they hadn't had all of the food and everything to feed them to make them to give them the proper nutrients and everything they needed to grow artificially up to this age you know people like that might be what the problem is there but then that could also be the hex tech having some time manipulation powers because we don't know if that's just growing the plant or if it's like accelerating the aging of the plant to make it grow that quick there's like the two possibilities there it could be a time travel thing but it could just be a matter manipulation thing you know and then of course as i said at the start i had got spoiled that um victor injects himself with the shimmer that doesn't seem like too big of a deal now that i've seen this episode it seems like quite a reasonable next step because he's deteriorating more and more and then he's gone back to this guy with his pet rio the big axolotl who's been experimenting with shimmer i believe this is like the scientist who was working with silco in like episode one right it might be the same guy but i'm not like a hundred percent sure because it looks like he was experimenting with shimmer and shimmer originates from this little flower that was in the cave that victor found so we have a bit more of like the backstory of shimmer which is really cool to see and then if we know it comes from this plant the phylites are taking out shimmer so maybe they could attack it at the source by destroying all of these plants somehow that would put a big dent in silco's plans you know so yeah victor he's you know He's getting more and more desperate because he is dying so of course you want to do whatever you can so i'm wondering you know if he injects himself what will happen obviously shimmer it like enhances your physical capabilities but will he go too far with it and overdose and become like the people we saw this episode in the underground where they had all of these adverse side effects or if he's with this originator of the shimmer does he have like a more purified version of it and he kind of he knows what he's doing a bit more than just the random people on the streets taking this drug right so he might be able to guide victor give him like the right amounts of dosage and give him a more pure version as well you know and you know i am kind of seeing a bit of a parallel here with vanda and silco and jason victor you know vanda wanted to do things kind of by the books he was still like leading this uprising 
but he wanted to do it a bit by the books and then Silco was a bit more extreme and it seems like Victor might be the counterpart to Silco and Jace is the counterpart to Vanda. I think there's a lot of comparisons you can make with Vanda and Silco. It is kind of like, you know, your Professor X and your Magneto, the, you know, they want there to be an uprising, one's more extreme and more violent than the other. So there's like a lot of comparisons to other things you can make there, you know. And then also in Victor's backstory, we got name drop Sky, who was this little girl who was in the underground who had seen him. And I don't, she might just be like a one off character there, but the fact they name dropped her made me think maybe she will return at some point. I'm not sure, but that could be something interesting. You know, if Victor is suddenly cured and can like walk again, which I think he might be able to, judging from the opening, the visuals. So if he can suddenly walk again, this Sky Girl, we see her grown up and she's like, Victor you can walk now maybe there's something there she might there's like an op opportunity for her to return maybe I don't know I am wondering now that Heimerdinger has been like exiled he's been shunned away from the counsellors what is going to happen with this new Hextech technology I feel like his prediction is going to be true that the technology is going to go too far that they haven't researched it enough and there's going to be some like dire consequences of that obviously I haven't played the game so I don't know what the state of the world is in the games do they all have Hextech in the games or obviously don't tell me this is just rhetorical but like do they all have Hextech in the games can they teleport or was Hextech there's something that like went wrong and they were facing the consequences of that in the games I don't know I'm ending a his name is based off Oppenheimer the first half and Oppenheimer was the guy who created the nuclear bomb right or he was like part of the team because I know this because Christopher Nolan's making a movie about it and I'm pretty sure like Oppenheimer, after he realized the consequences of everything he did, he like hated himself for it and things. So I feel like having this character called Heimerdinger, who is based off of Oppenheimer a little bit, is quite telling. So I feel like something tragic or something will go really wrong with some of the Hextech or the Hextech will be used as like a really deadly weapon we've seen the like explosive capability of it in episode one but if you can like harness it and they've like purified it down more now will there be an even larger version of this explosion can they use it as like a nuclear bomb or use it to create this really destructive weaponry you know there's a lot of opportunity there so i think that's everything for this episode thank you for watching if you enjoyed this consider leaving a like or a comment and if you really loved it be sure to subscribe to keep up to date for all the future uploads so yeah thanks for watching bye